I'm here with Dr. Romano to do statistics questions for the DAP. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the author of the Death Destroyer book. I'm here today with Professor Blois, who was actually my teacher when I was in college, and he is agreeable to show us how to do some basic statistics. So I want you guys to watch, and we're gonna learn things about median, mode, variance, standard deviations. All right, Professor, I'd like you to give us some good insight into the stuff. Okay, Professor Blois here. Let's read the problem together. Find the mean, the mode, the median, the variance, and the standard deviation of this given data set, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's begin. I think we all know what the mean is. The symbol of that is mu, the Greek symbol mu, and it's equal to the sum of the scores divided by the number of scores. So all we have to do is add the number of scores here, add, add them all up. Uh, let's see, uh, let's add them this way. Six and 10 is 16, seven and nine is 16, 16 and 16 is 32, 32 plus eight is 40. So the sum of the scores is 40, and is the number of scores, one, two, three, four, five, there are five scores there. So the mean of this uh, data set is equal to eight. Very straightforward, the arithmetic mean. Okay. The mode is defined as the number that occurs most often in a data set. Well, if you look at this data set, there's no one number that occurs most often. So what we can say about this is that it's all mode or no mode. Same thing. Take your choice. They both say the same thing. The median of a data set is the number such that there are as many scores above that sc median as there are below that median. You've heard of expressions like the median income or the median cost of a house in a neighborhood. Well, that's just it. The n cost of a house uh, is more than the, uh, uh, there, there are as many uh, uh, houses that cost more than the median value as there are less than the median value. Looking at this data set, it's pretty clear that eight lies right in the middle. There are two above, two below, so that's the score that lies exactly in the middle. Uh, what happens if you have, that's if there's an even number, if there's an odd number of elements in the data set, it's easy to pick out the median because there's always one that stands out in the middle. But what if there's an even number of elements in the data set? Well, then the median is going to come somewhere in between the two middle numbers. And simply what you do is you take the arithmetic mean of those two middle numbers. Uh, the, the arithmetic mean of two and three is two and a half. And that becomes the median of that data set. Okay, that was just a, a little side comment. So we know that the median, we'll call that M, is also equal to 8. So now we come, the, the mean, the mode, and the median are measures of central tendency of a data set, what the general behavior is of the center of that data set. The variance and standard deviation are called measures of dispersion because they measure to what degree the data is dispersed on the number line. So uh, the standard deviation is the standard rule, is the most commonly used yardstick to measure dispersion. So if you have a small standard deviation, you know that the data set is pretty much clustered around the mean, where a large standard deviation means the data set is more spread out on the number line. Now, how do you figure out the, the variance and the standard deviation? Well, the, for, the uh, uh, formula for the, va uh, the variance is, the symbol for it is sigma squared. That's small sigma, and that's equal to the sum of x minus mu squared over n. That is, it's the sum of the deviations, of the individual deviations, that is the difference between each element and the mean, squared, add all those up, and divide by the number of elements. In our uh, situation, we know the mean is equal to 8, so it's going to be x minus 8 squared over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 5 elements. Let's figure this out on the fly. You know, if this were a standard class, you'd make a, a table, but here's how to do it in a fast way. If you were on a test and had to figure out the variance, let's do it this way. We know that the mean is eight. So what we're gonna do is take each one of these individual scores, six. Six minus eight is minus two. Minus two squared is four. Got that? Seven, we're well, gonna do the same thing. Seven minus eight is negative one. Negative one squared is 
1. 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. 0 squared is 0. 9 minus 8 is 1. 1 squared is 1. And 10 minus 8 squared uh, is 2 squared, and that gives us 4. So that means the numerator of this expression is 4 plus 4 is 8, 9, 10, is 10, and the denominator is 5. Therefore, the variance of this data set is 2. Now, to find the standard deviation, all we have to do is take the square root of that. Okay, the, the, write the formula again with the square root around and it. sigma is the form, is the variable for standard deviation, Professor? Uh, no, sigma is the... No, I mean the, the one underneath that. Oh, this sigma, yeah. yes. Small sigma. This is capital sigma, right. meaning summation of, and this is small sigma. So we, all we have to do is say it's the square root of 2, or approximately 1.4. And that's how to calculate the variance of the standard deviation. We need the variance to find the standard deviation, just a matter of taking the square root. Now let's look at the second problem, which also may appear on the dash. How would the mean, how would each one of these statistics, the mean, the mode, the median, the variance, the standard deviation, how would each of them change if each element in the data set were increased by seven? Okay. Well, if we increase each one of these elements by 7, well, what new uh, set do we have? 7 and 6 is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Uh, I think you can pretty much see that the, each of these three, uh, uh, um, the two, these two, the mean and the median, the me those measures of central tendency are only going to be shifted to the right by seven points on the number line. So uh, what's gonna happen to the mean? It's gonna increase by seven. What's gonna happen to the median? That's also simply going to increase by seven. And as you can see here, here is the mean and the median of our new data set in which each was increased by seven. It's exactly seven more than the original. We can do the computation, but I think it's on principle. We can just say, yes, the mean and the median are going to increase by seven. Now. How are the variance and the standard deviation going to change with that shift to the right? Well, notice if you shift this number set, if you take this data set and shift it to the right, you are not changing its dispersion on the number line. It's still occupying the same spread on the number line. Therefore, the variance and the standard deviation are going to remain exactly the same. Okay, same and same. The dispersion is not affected whatsoever. All right, now let's go and answer part B. What would happen to each of these statistics if they were each, mo of each element in the data set were multiplied by five? All right, well, without, uh, we could write that out if you want. Let's see, uh, five times six is 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay, what happens there? Well, you can see that the, uh, the mean is also going to be multiplied by 5, right? So you, you see the mean here is 40, and uh, 5 times 8 is 40. So it's going to be 5 times the mean. Same thing with the median. The median, the, another measure of essential tendency, is simply going to be multiplied by 5. So that's 5 times m. Now, what happens to the, the variance and the standard deviation? Notice that we, when we multiply each of these by 5, there's a greater spreading out on the number line. So yes, these two measures of dispersion are going to change. The standard deviation is going to change by a factor of 5. So this is going to be 5 times sigma, 5 times the standard deviation. And because of the square property uh, of, uh, of the variance, the amount by which the variance is going to change is 25. So it's going to be 25 times the original variance and at five times the original standard deviation. So that's how you answer a question like this, and that's sort of a summary of how to calculate variance and standard deviation. Okay, I hope that helps you guys to see a nice question. Do you have more in the future for us on statistics? Are there oh, more sure. variations to this? or This is pretty basic, but uh, yeah, there are variations on this. Yeah, a little slightly. Okay, in our Mad Destroyer, we have quite a lot of questions that I want you to go over, but this will wet your beak a little bit and get you started on this area of statistics. It's a hot topic for the dot. All right, we'll be seeing you, and we're going to be making a lot more videos on this. See you in study group. Bye-bye.